another live hour You'll take my life, but I'll take of the Alex life. Jones Show. You fire musket, but I'll run and I think you guessed it, I am Alex Jones. I know we've got a lot of new listeners tuning in every day as the broadcast continues to explode. Well, the bugle has sounded. The charge has begun. Obama is not facing re-election. He has the power of the executive order. He has shown he'll use it like no other president. And he, as a state senator and U.S. senator, we did this in a report last week, read the quotes from the voter guides. Uh, there in Illinois, uh, he said he believes in the abolition of private ownership. He believes in a total ban of guns. You see Chicago, total ban. You see New York, total ban uh, for the general public. If you're kind of the mafia-connected bigwigs, they can get, you know, armed guards or whatever. You know, the mercenaries, they're always allowed to have their guns. The UN's above the law. They can rape and kill whoever they want, get di diplomatic immunity in any city. So that's, that's what it's all about. The government massing weaponry against us, private mercenaries, but we can't have anything. Uh, and Obama has said he wants the assault weapons ban back. And uh, Dianne Feinstein, as you know, has said that means physical. She wants California style where you have to turn them in. She wants gun shows shut down. Um, again, I did a 20 minute special report last week uh, titled, uh, you know, proof Obama is coming for your guns. But I thought we should get Larry Pratt on for about 40 minutes or so. And then we'll uh, uh, go to your phone calls, those of you that are holding and get into some of the uh, uh, economic news that I have not not gotten into yet uh, in any detail that we need to cover. Uh, but, I mean, this is just from uh, last year and again this year. ATF to accept public comments prior to outlawing shotguns. And then you go, they have a link in the Greeley Gazette, that should have been national news, to the ATF. And they said, oh, we're going to have a rulemaking saying we're going to ban most shotguns, 60-plus percent made uh, in, in the last decade, that can uh, take a clip. That can be converted to take a clip. Well, that's any gun that is semi-auto or pump that you load in the bottom. That's pretty much all my shotguns. Uh, so it's not just law. They're suing gun manufacturers. Bloomberg, who also wants to tell you what you can eat and drink. Uh, these are control freaks. They want us to live like folks in Chicago and New York with six, seven locks on our doors. The great people in New York and Chicago not allowed to defend themselves. This is mafia government. We're on the air, by the way, in Chicago. We've had folks call in saying they wish they could have guns. Almost impossible to get one. Uh, and they harass people statewide there. Uh, but not, but, but, but those cities is where they really restrict it. Uh, California, highly restrictive. Uh, and if you look at a map of the world, most countries have banned guns outright. And they always follow the same pattern. So the plunge is happening now. And I know Larry Platt doesn't like to be alarmist, but uh, what did Barry Goldwater say? Um, Extremism and defense of liberty is, is no vice, so I really want him, pun intended, to hit him with both barrels, gunowners.org. He's the executive director of Gun Owners of America for over 30 years, needs no no uh, introduction. And again, uh, the, the NRA's gotten better. I remember talking to Larry 12 years ago and saying, uh, you've got to go after the NRA for their 68 Gun Control Act support, for their current support. And he finally started going after him a few years ago. When they were basically saying, oh, we can have some, you know, restriction, they've, they've gotten a little better, but still gun owners is the place to keep the NRA honest. So all I can say is go sign up, become a member, get their free email alerts, gunowners.org, because they, we would have our guns basically banned if it wasn't for Gun Owners of America and you supporting them and uh, many others. And it's, it's, it's just a fact. Understand, folks, we don't have a lot of allies, but the ones we've got are like big junkyard dogs in defense of the republic. Larry, how bad is it? Because we know the former uh, chief of staff at the White House said we're going to put you on a no-gun buy list. We know they're moving towards that. I mean, they are licking their chops right now. Obama said in the second debate that he wants to ban not just semi-auto rifles, but handguns. So so they're letting us know the U.N. is reconvened. They're, they're letting us know that U.N. goal of, uh, quote, banning civilian ownership of firearms, saying they threaten the legitimate power monopoly of the state. That's... Uh, July 7th, 2001, uh, Unidir. I mean, how bad is it? What is the state of our precious Second Amendment, the only country really in the world left other than Switzerland that doesn't have disarmed slaves? Well, Alex, uh, first of all, thank you so much for letting me appear before your viewers and listeners. Uh, you have a tremendous audience, and I'm very grateful every time I have a chance to visit with you. Uh, I don't think your concerns are misplaced. I think this president showed us during the time when he still had to face re-election 
that he didn't have any basic problems, certainly no moral objection to rule, ruling illegally and to ruling unconstitutionally. Uh, and his use of the executive order is some, something like perhaps 10 times uh, what George Bush's was, and his was quite a bit more than those before him. Uh, so we have seen government growing like a metastatic cancer here in Washington, and it's uh, enclaves all around the country, and I suppose around the world. It's just stunning to me that we have reelected a man who really doesn't give a rip about his oath of office, uh, whatever he understands by the Constitution isn't what the founders understood. And so I think we're in for, uh, as you're indicating, a real tough time. I would have no surprise if the president were to have his Department of Justice issue an edict to gun stores who were ultimately under them uh, through the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, which is part of the Department of Justice, telling the dealers You'll lose your license after, oh, maybe maybe 30 days from now if you sell another handgun that has a caliber bigger than 380, or if you sell a long gun, rifle or shotgun, that accepts a high-capacity magazine. And as you indicated, that's probably most of your shotguns. And uh, any rifles you might have might also fit that same description. Uh, it's going to hit, if he were to do something like that, in a way that the dealers would have no choice because unconstitutionally they have to have it right now they have to have a permit a license from the federales in order to be able to open a business and stay in business and the day they pull that license from any dealer he's out of business he can no longer sell any of his guns to the general public he's finished and so if your livelihood depends on that unconstitutional scrap of paper, well, you're going to tend to do whatever you're told from Washington or else. And so I, I can see something like that happening. And by the way, it would probably make the UN so happy because in countries where they do let you have a gun, my wife's from Panama and their laws are rather similar to those of Latin America. If you can crawl over enough glass and you have enough connections and you finally get a permit, you'll be limited to a 380 uh, and you won't be able to have uh, any long gun that accepts a high capacity magazine. So that's the, that would make us so much more responsible in the eyes of the rest of the world. I, I, you, you know that that will be one of the arguments that, well, our good friends, if we're going to be a responsible citizen in the world community, these are the kinds of conditions that we will have to impose upon ourselves in order to be a good neighbor in the international community. Barf. Uh, that's, I'm afraid that's what's coming down. And there, there's two ways that I think we can try to deal with this. One is that there's a, there are a small number of representatives coming to the Congress the likes of which there had never been in my memory. Um, maybe if I go back to John Ashbrook, uh, somebody like that was a very outspoken conservative and died mysteriously in a Senate campaign uh, years and years ago. Um, but for the recent past, we've had nobody like Steve Stockman, who just got elected from a district outside of Houston to the east and to the north, and Jackie Walorski in the northwest corner of Indiana, these two have a history that tells me, and, and since I know them personally, I'll just describe them, but I understand there may be a handful of others coming with the same steel backbone that these two have. When Stockman was in Congress for the, his one term uh, with the class of 94, he introduced a bill to overturn the recently enacted Clinton gun ban. And the Republicans uh, were even more, if you will, gun shy than they are now. Uh, this was a controversial issue. They didn't want to talk. I get where to, you're going. Were... It's time to get on the offense or we're cooked. It's over. We either realize we That's either it. gain ground or we're going to lose it all. This is a war. We cannot just keep having battles. We have to literally go dig these people out. We have to call on the authoritarian 
uh, uh, scum they yes. are. Because listen, the gun culture is well. The reason they call us bitter clingers is they know it's it's the core. It's what brings everybody together. Even liberals I know on social issues get now that they need guns, and we're gaining ground on this. So they're they're coming in to take it all. The bat the, the final battle is is starting to really unfold. I think so. I think uh, we're going to see the fangs bared uh, by this administration again. No more elections uh, that he has to worry about, and I don't think he worries about his party. I don't think he worries about anything. Finish except your point about himself. the people and bringing bills up. Is that what you were getting at? Is it's time to go on the offense? It's time to go on the offense. It's time to reintroduce and to push all over again repealers uh, that repeal whole swaths of unconstitutional federal gun laws. Stockman did it against his Republican leadership when he was in. We were in a meeting in Dick Armey's office. He was the majority leader then, and he told us to our face, you're not going to get a vote on Stockman's bill. If you do, it'll be over my dead body. Well, Gingrich was a little politically moxier. We did get the vote because Gingrich didn't want gun owners of America messing over his guys in their districts over this issue. That's right. We've got to really just just remove the rhinos, put real people in there. Uh, I want to come back and get into what I'm now seeing on the news. They're saying it's racist to own guns. Kind of like if you don't want government run health care, you're racist. As we saw in Katrina, and as we are watching now in New York and New Jersey, the federal government can't and won't help you in a crisis. FEMA ran out of water and MREs in days. Electricity is still off to over one million people. The Red Cross, who is quick to beg for money, is now slow to react. Don't put it off any longer. Get prepared today. The InfoWars shop is the largest distributor of ProPure water filter systems. And now, get 15% off your ProPure order with the promo code WATER15. While you're on InfoWarsShop.com, check out these other great preparedness items. The Aquapod Kit lets you store up to 65 gallons of water in your bathtub. The Pocket Socket provides you with manual electricity for small electronics like your cell phone. The Life Straw is great for your bug out bag. And check out our complete line of inner food products for great tasting and nutritionally dense foods that have a great shelf life. If you are looking to secure your home in a crisis, you can order Strategic Relocations, the film, a great companion to the book Strategic Relocations, third edition, and The Secure Home by Joel Skousen. When the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has already passed. Get prepared now, so if a crisis strikes your home, you and your family will be secure. Go to InfoWarsShop.com and don't forget the promo code WATER15 Is this second better? debate that he doesn't want to just ban semi-automatic rifles. He wants to ban your handguns that are semi-automatic. That's most handguns. And they've got the U.N. treaty coming up that once it's passed, the member nations, 50 percent vote, 51 percent. It becomes law here. They've got more Democrats in the Senate. And we're in deep trouble. I mean, we've never had the Second Amendment hanging by a thread. And they try to play this double game of going, we don't want your guns. You're stupid to go out and buy them, even though every gun I've bought over the last 20-something years has gone up in price. Um, it's amazing. And they, they really can't stand the fact that we know they're liars and we're voting with our dollars. And the fact that our gun culture, I just showed the Huffington Post article there in the last segment, if you're watching on PrisonPlanet.tv, but it says Obama's got to do something about this growing gun culture. They are hitting the panic button. Will you guys pull that back up? That was a great article you found. They are panicking. No, no, not not that article about uh, the General Pe General Petraeus, but that one. Yeah, Obama must take drastic action to end gun culture. To end our culture. See, the media has destroyed our culture. They've destroyed Christianity. They've destroyed everything. We don't have anything left, hardly, but guns. I hate to say that, but that's the one thing people still get. I'm not a slave. I have a right to defend myself. Places that take the guns have higher crime. Larry Pratt, I mean, is that an overstatement that at so many levels, the strongest thing we've got at so many areas is the guns, and they know it, and they are launching a total assault on it. 
Uh, a, do you agree? B, what do we do to defeat them? I mean, I agree with you. Go on the offense. Well, in addition to going on the offense, and I think now we have some players who are willing to play offense. I mentioned two of them, Steve Stockman, a new representative in the House of Representatives here in Washington, and Jackie Walorski, also a new representative. They have a history of standing up to their party leaders, elected leaders. In Jackie Walorski's case, she bucked Governor Mitch Daniels, who is known as a fiscal conservative. Well, he wanted to raise taxes to balance the budget, and she bucked him and got the whole caucus eventually to go along with her, forcing him to make cuts instead of raising taxes. Now, in a way, that's almost, uh, it's at least as impressive as what Stockman did, because Stockman got his vote on the gun issue. And unlike the last time, uh, if it goes over to the Senate, it's not going to be smothered by a Bob Dole. And Harry Reid has shown that when push comes to shove, he's a little reluctant to have an up or down vote on a gun issue. And so what I think might well happen is we'll get something out of the House. It'll go over to the Senate. Reid won't want to bring it up. But the rules of the Senate are rather somewhat more uh, available for getting things done. And as an amendment, uh, on threat of a filibuster, I can see somebody like Jim DeMint, Mike Lee, Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, somebody of that sort, uh, making sure that there's a fight to amend, a, say, a spending bill that the president has shown in the past he will sign even with pro-gun amendments to it. And that way we could actually have uh, the prospect of getting something done. Sure, so it's time to get on the offense. Briefly, we're going to come back with part of the next segment and then let you do it, uh, go because I know you're a busy man. Oh, you, have, you had one more point? No, uh, we can break if you need to. That's fine. No, no, no. I was just going to say, shifting gears, another subject, because I mentioned it before the break. We are seeing, and I'm getting callers saying this, but I'm defending the Second Amendment saying you're just a racist. And I go, what does that mean? And they can't even say. And now I'm seeing MSNBC and people say, aha, the age of the white man's over. You're going to have to turn your guns in. And I'm getting emails and seeing comments on YouTube. This is some new meme like... Like, like, oh, uh, it, it's like a, it's like a weird reverse racism or something. And, and the cover of Newsweek says, "You're white, your history, the Obama conquest," and he's in a Napoleon outfit with a sword. It's like some on the left now just are screaming for authoritarianism, but it's, it's almost like Hitlerian though, because it's mixed with a weird racial vitriol uh, that I guess MSNBC has been able to sell. It's very bizarre. Yeah, they've, they've learned uh, that uh, many conservatives, or at least many, quote, Republicans, are cowed by the playing of the race card. And I think what we need to do is to, if we're, uh, uh, I speak Spanish, I address Spanish audiences. I did a debate for an hour uh, on CNN and Espanol. And the point has to be made that the fact that guns are readily available here is why America is different. It's the tangible expression of the American spirit that we the people are in charge, not the governments from which you fled to get here to America. I want to hear so, you break that down further when we come back, because it's okay. fundamental that if they can get our guns, they believe they've won. I mean, because then it's about living under the socialists. They're going to take everything we got. I mean, this is slavery. Uh, Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Lenin, Mao. Mao Zedong said political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. The big government people don't like the fact we've got the guns. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? Okay, Mark Faber, I tell you, he's been incredibly accurate predicting things. He says prepare for massive market meltdown. We're going to get to that and then some of your phone calls when Larry Pratt leaves us. Larry, I've been asking a lot of the questions here. Uh, I want you to be able to add any other points that you think are important for listeners and other assaults we're going to see. Uh, but they tell us they're coming after our guns. They go, you got a Second Amendment. We just have a right to take them. But finishing up the point that you were trying to get to, um, because they say, oh, I mean, it's racist that our guns are killing people in Mexico. Well, Mexico's banned guns, and most of the guys that have them, it's hand grenades and grenade launchers and machine guns. They're not getting those at gun stores. You know, it's turned out the ATF was shipping them directly into Mexico. Fast and Furious goes a lot deeper. But finishing up with this weird racial vitriol, 
uh, where Time Magazine says you're white, your history, and shows Obama as a general with a sword. I mean, that's pretty, they show him as a dictator. They also show him as Lincoln and, and say he may have to deal with the states. We have uh, uh, Texas now in, in less than 24 hours. What is it, 50-something thousand signatures now? It was 25,000 in hours saying we, we want to secede. Uh, we need to just kick the globalist out of this country and just take our country back. But, uh, I mean, where do you see Obama going? And, again, you were trying to finish your point about this whole racism angle. It's like, hey, I don't like lemon pie. Why are you racist? You know, it's like, hey, I don't like your food at this restaurant. What are you, racist? It's just this, my, and people call in like it's powerful. Like, they're going to say, why are you a racist when I'm talking about not wanting to shut down our coal power plants? And I go, well, what do you mean I'm racist? Well, you know you are. You don't like Obama. And I go, yeah, I don't like him. He's a front man for the globalist. I mean, it's like a religion now. Uh, I mean, what can you say to this? You were you were getting cut off by the break talking about your CNN debate. Well, uh, it, I think it's somewhat disappointing for the other side to realize that there are a number of us uh, on the right who um, I'm married to a, a Latin American woman, have been for almost 50 years. Uh, and I can debate them in Spanish. And so that kind of takes a little bit of the starch out of their shirt, I think, because it doesn't fit the stereotype uh, that uh, somebody that uh, they just assume, if you don't agree with me, as you were saying, Alex, it's one size fits all. Well, you're a racist. I mean, if, if you don't agree with me down the line, everything I say, you're a racist. Uh, they don't increasingly have the ability to debate their point. And uh, when I did the CNN debate in Spanish, it, uh, they felt, uh, uh, I guess they were comfortable with the strength in numbers, so it was three against one. Um, but, you know, it's all the same argument, so I was really only debating one other, that argument that they all three were making. Uh, and they don't, uh, I'm not sure they figured out how to get out of that pit. Now, so far, they were able to do a, a very effective job with Mitt Romney, because Mitt Romney, who doesn't share, say, a Reagan view of America's greatness, and he doesn't know how to articulate it, that's for sure, and he didn't. And so he let Obama get away with anything he wanted. And in fact, as you say, they came up with the race card in the Fast and Furious scandal. Wait, 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 excuse me. Those are Mexicans that are dying, almost none of whom uh, trace back to Spain through my wife's lineage. These are people who are brown, who are uh, typical Latin Americans. Uh, and I thought it was kind of racist to kill some 400 plus and counting with guns that our government sent down there for that purpose. But I mean, and why uh, isn't that racist? Sure. I mean, you're right. But I mean, it's literally, like you said, you go, hey, I don't want socialism. I don't want to lose our freedoms. And they just call in and go, you're a racist. Right. And, and then they wait like you're about to fall over. Right. Uh, and I guess, the, and they repeat talking points uh, of, of MSNBC and Chris Matthews and, and Rachel Maddow and all of them. I mean, they get up there and they say, if you don't like health care, it's because you're racist. Uh, no, uh, I don't. I know government's going to ruin health care. And look, the prices are already going up. The economy's shutting down. I mean, socialism. I had a guy call in, uh, you know, who said he was a socialist. And when I said, well, I don't like socialism, he's, he's endorsed communism before, his name John from Ohio, he's called many times, he's a you know, white guy. And when I said, look, socialism doesn't work, he goes, well, that's a typical racist statement. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, uh, the Russians are white, it didn't work over there. I mean, you know, there's hardly any black people over there, maybe, you know, one out of a thousand. What is that now racist too? I mean, it's like, I mean, if I say... I like lemon pie over cheesecake. They go, that's racist. I mean, it's like if I say I like blue skies instead of, you know, uh, uh, red skies. It's, I mean, it's like if I have an, uh, all they say is that. It's like a weird cult of people just like parrots. Racism, racism, right? Ra it's really bizarre. Racism, racism, racism. Some of the folks that have been produced by the public schools, the government schools, uh, are probably okay with that comeback that's racist but it, frankly it, it, a lot of people in this country still can think and if that's the way they want to conduct a debate in front of the american people bring it on i, I think it's yeah. time we we uh, have that debate and let the whole country see just how inadequate their arguments but why are. would newsweek come out and have david Fromm has attacked me seven ways to sunday 
come out and say, if you're white, your history. I mean, that is an, and, and then I see that as a meme online. It's like trying to, I guess they want, the left really wants to try to have a race war in the hopper. Well, golly, you're going to have to be attacked by somebody at more substance than Newsweek. They are no longer publishing in paper. They're only online. What, what, the American people are not buying that stuff. And if that little kept house conservative, Mr. Fromm, uh, is happy associating with Newsweek, bless his heart, more power to him. <laughs> you're right. He is a, uh, just a piece of work. I, I'm just, <laughs> What do you think this election really signified? I mean, I saw a lot of fraud against Romney. I just call it like I see it. Uh, mm -hmm. Some states didn't even count that day's votes and just said he, you know, that Obama was the winner. Uh, I, I see them saying conservatives and libertarians had better become socialist if you ever want to win the Democrats. Well, I mean, you if you, if you became Stalin, they would become Lenin. If you became Lenin, they would become Marx. There's no way to ever become them to win because you've already become them. You've got to go out and promote real constitutionalism. We saw 12 million to 15 million Ron Paul people go out and not vote this time because of the way they were treated. And in a way, some say, let it get worse. That's what will cause real change. I mean, is there a way to make lemons out of this lemonade? Well, I'd prefer to make lemons uh, that I purchased rather than that were shoved down my throat. Sure. But, um I'll do what I have to do. Uh, and so in addition to going on the offense in Congress, which I think now we might be able to do, uh, we also need to keep in mind, and you and I have talked about this before, there is in most of our states the very powerful institution of the county sheriff. In fact, one of the things I'd urge people to buy at our site at gunowners.org in the media section uh, where we have the bookstore uh, or one other say you'll find the bookstore. Uh, it, it's called The County Sheriff by Richard Mack. You've probably interviewed him. Excellent uh, book. We carry it as well. People should go to gunowners.org and buy that book and give it to your sheriff and give it to all yes. the sheriff candidates. Yes, that's exactly. Read it first so you're sure you know what's in it. But it's the history and the constitutional doctrine of the sheriff as the top cop because he's the only cop that has a an immediate delegation of authority via election from we the people by we the people. And so it is very important that we increase the number of these constitutional sheriffs throughout the land who are willing and able uh, to tell the feds not in my county. If what you're trying to do is not an Article One, Section 8 of our federal constitution, and there's a couple other things the constitution tells them to do as well, then you're not going to do it here in this county. And the sheriff gets their authority from the state constitutions. Uh, expanding on that, what do you make of nullification? I think that's something we're going to really see explode now. Uh, the sheriff is the guy who can nullify a state legislature, can nullify an acting legislation that's, and some states have done it, saying uh, there's not going to be any exchange for Obamacare in our state. Uh, they are just flat out telling the feds, take a hike. That's what the federal system was designed to do. And now uh, with 25 states, I think is the latest count, petitioning the White House for secession, and it's a rather more serious matter than any of the other states when Texas does that because Texas came into the union with the proviso, explicit proviso, that it can also say adios and it can be on its way. And that's why it's called the Lone Star State because it has that proviso built in. Uh, go ahead. So I, I think that's a very serious threat. Texas is one of the few healthy economies in this among the states of this country. Uh, it's robust. It has a conservative political culture. And frankly, I think there could be a majority of Texans that say, you know, why not? We've got our own sea coast. Uh, if they want, they can't really boycott our airports because we have too many hubs that are central for the airlines. We're just too important for them to ignore. Uh, and if they do they really think they're going to invade Texas and take it over? Um, you know, they tried that once, and uh, they got away with it that one time. I don't think they'd get away with it this time. I don't think the military would, would uh, most of them, would say, that's not a constitutional order. I'm not going to do it. Well, the Texas legislature last year said you're not going to grope us anymore because all of the House reps have been flying into Austin had been getting groped. Unanimous House vote. Dewhurst killed it in the Senate, so he lost his national Senate run. 
Cruz says he's going to support the Second Amendment, a Ron Paul type guy. We'll uh, see if that's really the case. Um, but expanding on all of this, they threatened a federal blockade with aircraft. I say, throw me in that briar patch. Let's right. get this confrontation going. Let's show what crooks you are. Right. I don't. I think that blockade would hurt uh, the remaining states more than it would hurt Texas, and it could well precipitate a sympathetic joining uh, of Texas's action. You know it's going to happen. We need Texas to lead out of this new world order takeover, and then we can reconstitute the republic, because there's no doubt, Larry, we've got a globalist takeover in Washington. They think they've conquered this country. They brag on the news that these foreign banks have taken us over. They're the ones that want us disarmed so that they can create socialism to suck our money offshore to themselves. And they want to use a giant gaggle of illegals and welfare queens as their army. And I just, you know, it's time to call them on it. It's time to get in their face. Uh, Texas could effectively seal its own border. That would be an extremely positive first step, whether or not they uh, ultimately secede, to simply say, we're being invaded. United States, you're supposed to protect us from invasion. You're not. We're going to take that over because we didn't give that power away. We just said that was something the federal government should do. But if you're not going to do it, we're going to do it. And what are the feds going to do? Invade Texas in order to not close the border? I think at some point the American people are going to say, what? Uh, one of the, the, the biggest problem I saw with Romney is he, as a liberal, would not join uh, issues and he would not call Obama the socialist that he is. He would not specifically draw attention to uh, the many socialist programs that Obama has been implementing and advocating. And he would not address the country in terms of the greatness of America, what it has been and what it can be again. He didn't spell any of that out. And sure, because he couldn't, he, he agreed with Obama on so much. Right. And instead of, uh, again, people going and joining the globalist, this th this is a real shot across the bow of the Republicans that, that no more games, they're not co-opting the liberty movement, it's over. They're either going to disappear and let the Democrats take over and a bunch of states are going to secede or the power structure is going to get it. Right. They're, they're either going to have to act like Republicans talk. In other words, they're going to have to walk the talk. Or I agree with you. There will be uh, at, at, at first, I think we might see next election an increase in what we saw this time. The establishment continue to lose in contests that are brought by conservatives. Uh, the one in your Texas Senate race was a great example of an outsider uh, challenging the establishment Dewhurst. And Dewhurst showed what the establishment was like. He's a facilitator of all that is wrong in Texas. He makes it happen or keeps reform from happening as a lieutenant governor there in Texas. Exactly. He had a terrible record, and Cruz called him on it, showed how you should run a campaign. And when people hear that there is a distinction being drawn by somebody who really believes in freedom, the freedom fighter is often going to win. And we will well, said, there's time. no doubt Ron Paul would have beaten Obama, but the Republicans had to throw him out of there. Uh, and so now look what they've gotten. Larry Pratt, uh, by the way, we were at gunowners.org. I've never seen this happen before. We crashed your site, buddy. Um, gee, thanks a lot, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll have well, it back up shortly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah, and everybody should go there and sign up for the free email alerts. Thank you so much, Larry Pratt. God bless you, my friend. Thanks. There he goes. He's going off to another interview in 15 minutes. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. <laughs> to keep the NRA honest. So all I can say is go sign up, become a member, I get their free email alerts, gunowners.org, because they, we would have our guns basically banned if it wasn't for Gun Owners of America and you supporting them and uh, many others. And it's, it's, it's just a fact. Understand, folks, we don't have a lot of allies, but the ones we've got are like big junkyard dogs in defense of the republic. Larry, how bad is it? Because... We know the former uh, chief of staff at the White House said we're going to put you on a no-gun buy list. We know they're moving towards that. I mean, they are licking their chops right now. Obama said in the second debate that he wants to ban not just semi-auto rifles, but handguns. So, so they're letting us know the U.N. has reconvened. 
They're, they're letting us know that UN goal of, uh, quote, banning civilian ownership of firearms, saying they threaten the legitimate power monopoly of the state. That's uh, July 7th, 2001, uh, Unidir. I mean, how bad is it? What is the state of our precious Second Amendment, the only country really in the world left other than Switzerland that doesn't have disarmed slaves? Well, Alex, uh, first of all, thank you so much for letting me appear before your viewers and listeners. Uh, you have a tremendous audience, and I'm very grateful every time I have a chance to visit with you. Uh, I don't think your concerns are misplaced. I think Total ban. You see New York, total ban uh, for the general public. If you're kind of the mafia-connected bigwigs, they can get, you know, armed guards or whatever. You know, the mercenaries, they're always allowed to have their guns. The UN's above the law. They can rape and kill whoever they want, get di diplomatic immunity in any city. So that's, that's what it's all about. The government massing weaponry against us, private mercenaries, but we can't have anything. Uh, and Obama has said he wants the assault weapons ban back. And uh, Dianne Feinstein, as you know, has said that means physical. She wants California-style where you have to turn them in. She wants gun shows shut down. Um, again, I did a 20-minute special report last week uh, titled, uh, you know, Proof Obama is Coming for Your Guns. But I thought we should get Larry Pratt on for about 40 minutes or so, and then we'll uh, uh, go to your phone calls, those of you that are holding, and get into some of the uh, uh, economic news that I have not, not gotten into yet uh, in any detail that we need to cover. Uh, but, I mean, this is just from... Uh, Last year, and again this year, ATF to accept public comments prior to outlawing shotguns. And then you go, they have a link in the Greeley Gazette, this should have been national news, to the ATF. And they said, oh, we're going to have a rulemaking saying we're going to ban most shotguns, 60 plus percent made uh, in, in the last decade, that can uh, take a clip, that can be converted to take a clip. Well, that's any gun that is semi-auto or pump that you load in the bottom. That's pretty much all my shotguns. Uh, so it's not just law, they're suing gun manufacturers, Bloomberg, who also wants to tell you what you can eat and drink. Uh, these are control freaks. They want us to live like folks in Chicago and New York with six, seven locks on our doors. The great people in New York and Chicago not allowed to defend themselves. This is mafia government. We're on the air, by the way, in Chicago. We've had folks call in saying they wish they could have guns. Almost impossible to get one. Uh, and they harass people statewide there. Uh, but not, but 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 those cities is where they really restrict it. Uh, California highly restrictive. Uh, and if you look at a map of the world, most countries have banned guns outright, and they always follow the same pattern. So the plunge is happening now. And I know Larry Platt doesn't like to be alarmist, but uh, what did Barry Goldwater say? Um, extremism and defense of liberty is is no vice. So I really want him. Pun intended to hit him with both barrels, gunowners.org. He's the executive director of Gun Owners of America for over 30 years, needs no, no uh, introduction. And again, uh, the, the NRA's gotten better. I remember talking to Larry 12 years ago and saying, uh, you've got to go after the NRA for their 68 Gun Control Act support, for their current support. And he finally started going after him a few years ago when they were basically saying, oh, we can have some you know, restriction. They've, they've gotten a little better, but still gun owners is the place. To His president showed us during the time when he still had to face re-election, that he didn't have any basic problems, certainly no moral objection, to rule, ruling illegally and to ruling unconstitutionally. Uh, and his use of the executive order is some, something like perhaps 10 times uh, what George Bush's was, and his was quite a bit more than those before him. Uh, so we have seen government growing like a metastatic cancer here in Washington and its uh, enclaves all around the country and I suppose around the world. It's just stunning to me that we have re-elected a man who really doesn't give a rip about his oath of office. Uh, whatever he understands by the Constitution isn't what the founders understood. And so I think we're in for, uh, as you're indicating, a real tough time. I would have no surprise if the president were to have his Department of Justice issue an edict to gun stores who were ultimately under them uh, through the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, which is part of the Department of Justice, telling their dealers, you'll lose your license after, oh, maybe, maybe 30 days from now.
to another live hour You'll take my life, but I'll take of the Alex life. Jones Show. Musket, and I think you guessed it, I am Alex so Jones. I know we've got a lot of new listeners tuning in every day as the broadcast continues to explode. Well, the bugle has sounded. The charge has begun. Obama is not facing re-election. He has the power of the executive order. He has shown he'll use it like no other president. And he, as a state senator and U.S. senator, we did this in a report last week, read the quotes from the voter guides uh, there in Illinois. Uh, he said he believes in the abolition of private ownership. He believes in a total ban of guns. You see Chicago, 